Hello everybody, welcome to the video on escape velocity. Suppose you have a rocket of mass m that's initially on the surface of the Earth at point p. And we'll launch this rocket at an initial velocity of v, and it travels away from the Earth. Now as it approaches the infinity point, or as it goes further away from the Earth, its kinetic energy will decrease, and this will be transformed into its increasing gravitational potential energy. Now we talk about the gravitational potential energy in more detail in the module on potential energy, so have a look at that if you haven't already. Now this rocket, as it decreases in kinetic energy, its speed will decrease as the kinetic energy is equal to half mv squared. Now the concept here I want you to think about is what would be the minimum velocity required for this rocket so that by the time it reaches this hypothetical point in the universe called the infinity point, its kinetic energy becomes exactly zero. And of course, as we discussed in another video, its gravitational potential energy also becomes zero. Now you can imagine if the velocity is not fast enough, the rocket will come to a break or come to a stop with a velocity of zero before it can reach this point of infinity. Now, the concept of escape velocity is this minimum velocity that we just discussed. The definition is that it is the minimum velocity required for any mass to obtain a gravitational potential of zero when the mass reaches the infinity point. The escape velocity is also the velocity that allows the mass to escape the influence or simply the gravitational field that it is currently in. When it reaches the infinity point, the object will be expending all of its kinetic energy. Now remember, as it's approaching away or going further away from the gravitational field, its kinetic energy is decreasing and so is it its velocity. It will expend all of its kinetic energy to do work against the gravity. And this is the reason why its gravitational potential energy is increasing as this is happening. So if we launch a mass at its escape velocity, it will also get to the infinity point where its kinetic energy is zero as well. And during this process where it goes from the point in the gravitational field to the point in infinity, its kinetic energy will be completely transformed into its gravitational potential energy. We can use this concept where the Ke is being transformed into U to actually derive an expression for the escape velocity. Now we know the final energy of the mass when it gets to this hypothetical infinity point will be zero because both the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy will be both zero. If we don't consider any air resistance or any friction for the sake of that, and if we only look at conservative forces, then we can apply the law of conservation of energy and say that the total energy at the very end, which is zero, is also equal to the total initial energy before the mass has started its journey towards the point of infinity. Its initial energy can be expressed in terms of its kinetic energy, half mv squared, and also its gravitational potential energy, which is minus gmm over r. And both of these should be zero due to the conservation of energy. Now we can rearrange this equation to put both energies on opposite sides, and we can cancel smaller m on both sides, to get v squared over 2gm over r. And by square rooting both sides, I can obtain an expression for the escape velocity, which is the square root of 2gm over r. Now, of course, the capital M here, we usually refer to this as the Earth. This is the mass of the planet whose gravitational field we are trying to escape from using the escape velocity. You might realize that this expression for escape velocity is awfully similar to the expression for the orbital velocity. The escape velocity is the square root of 2gm over r, whereas the orbital velocity is simply the square root of gm over r. I remember the differences here by remembering that the escape velocity should be faster than the orbital velocity because we are trying to escape the gravitational field. Whereas for the orbital velocity, we are trying to use the gravitational field to remain in the orbit around the planet. 
All right, let's take a look at a calculation example for escape velocity. Calculate the escape velocity for a 70 kilogram person on the surface of the Earth. Now we're given the following information, the mass of the planet Earth, and also the average radius of Earth in meters. So remember that to derive the expression for escape velocity, we need to use the conservation of energy. So the kinetic energy and the potential energy at the initial point is equal to the final energy when it gets to infinity, so E final and infinity, which is equal to zero. And this is because both the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy are both zero when the object gets to the infinity point. So we have half mv squared minus g capital M small m divided by r, and this is equal to zero. Now by rearranging, I get half m v squared equals to g m m over r. And I can cancel the small m both sides. And if I multiply 2 on both sides, I can get rid of the half here and add a 2 here. And finally, by squaring both sides, my escape velocity is equal to the square root of g, sorry, 2gm over now, g is 6.67 .6 times 10 to the minus 11. Capital M here is mass of the Earth, so 6.0 times 10 to the power 24. And this is all divided by the radius of the Earth, because a person is standing on the surface of the Earth. So this is 6.371 times 10 to the power 6 meters. And this is all square roots. And this is equal to 11,200 meters per second. So if a 70 kilogram person wants to reach the infinity point, this is the initial velocity it must be traveling at. Now you can see in the working out, I did not use the mass of the person at all, because the step velocity is independent on an object's mass. It doesn't matter if this person is 70 kilograms or heavier, and it doesn't matter if it's a rocket that weighs 10 tons, the escape velocity for this mass of any sizes, of any mass, will be exactly the same as long as the mass of the Earth and the radius are identical. And this will conclude the video on escape velocity.